Okay, so uh, once again, we're going to continue our concept review from yesterday for module one, the binary origins and essentials. And uh, remember that you want to scour, read, memorize, heavily review, read out loud in the shower, whatever it is you have to do uh, to know backwards, forwards, inside out, and sideways all of the content from module one, right? Uh, but we're also using some, some diagrams uh, today to introduce some binary essentials. So uh, let's see. So this is where we were yesterday. We explained that in the binary universe, we have some very low level stuff that can be combined in unique ways to create an entire digital universe, much in the same way that the particles of an atom can be numbered and combined in different ways to create each of the 92 natural elements and higher artificial man-made elements. You have the same three particles here, protons, neutrons, and electrons. And over here in the binary universe, you have ones and zeros, which are the value zero is significant. It is the first value of the number system for the base two number system, even though it's a non-value. So we want you to understand that zero always comes first and it's always listed first. And one, and that's as far as we get in the binary universe. But we also stated that you can use other binary values to create computing systems. So anything where there's two distinctly different values, salt and pepper, uh, white and black, uh, left and right, top and bottom, in and out, um, hot and cold, yes and no, true and false. In particular, true and false are significant because true and false became the basis for discrete math, logical math, math based on logic, true and false. Ones and zeros are how we use true and false in computer architectures. So everywhere you see discrete math, first of all, I want to ask anyone, has anyone here taken discrete math or is taking discrete math at this time? Nope. nope. Okay. Okay. Well, when you get to the discrete math course as a computer science student, one thing you'll learn is that they're always talking true and false instead of ones and zeros, and their truth table, the table of possible combinations of trues and false, right? It's called a truth table, that their version of the truth table is inverted from ours. And that's just one thing that I'm going to uh, share with you at this point. And, uh, but for the purposes of our class, you're going to want to do it the way we do. Instead of true and false, we're going to be using ones and zeros. All right. Um, <clears throat> There is a, a logical equivalent to the ones and zeros, the true and false, we just said that. And it is the logical component of that Boolean, uh, those two Boolean values, true and false, that form the basis for the software that we use uh, as computer scientists. We frame decisions in a series of programming instructions based on true and false. You know, if a uh, value equals, is, is greater than or equal to 10, then do this, else do the other, right? So it's the logical equivalent. These are things you already know. Uh, one of the things I want you to understand instinctively is that false and zero and no and off is the same as open. So a circuit that's open uh, in computer architecture, a closed circuit is a loop of wire that allows electrons to flow to light a light bulb. So off means that there's a break in the circuit. The circuit is open. There's a break in the circuit. We'll see an example of that shortly. <clears throat> in binary terms on the hardware, you can create ones and zeros by using lasers or magnets. You can use punch cards. Uh, you may remember uh, or have seen computer cards, their programming cards, and 
the computer punches little squares out of the card. The squares are marks on the card and originally mainframe computers used programming cards to signify ones and zeros. And so we actually punched holes in paper with original mainframe computers uh, created by IBM and some other companies. But in um, modern terms, in a hard disk, we put, we, we magnetize little spots on the metal plate and that gives us a one or we don't magnetize and that gives us a zero for that given location on the disk platter. Now in combination, we're using the base two number system and this is where we get into the real nitty gritty. The base two number system means that we have twos for the base and we're using exponents. So if you'll bear with me here, any number that is to the zero power, that's equal to one. And so we have this, let's pretend we have a binary value of zero, one, one, zero. In the base two number system, we have the two to the zeros place. That's this place right here. We have the two to the ones place. You'll see I've drawn it down here also. Two to the one power, that's, uh, if that's turned on, uh, two to the first power is two. So I have a value of two. If two to the second power is turned on with a one, notice my wording, it's turned on with a one. It's lit up. It's the value of that base two place is preserved or manifested, right? It, it's represented. This one, it's turned off. So the one's place, we don't have a one here. Two cubed over on the fourth place. Two to the two, two to the third power is eight. If this were lit, if it were turned on, if it were on, if it were true, we would have to put this value two to the third down and add it to the four plus two. But as it stands, zero one one six equals the integer six, the value six in decimal terms. You need to be able to convert between base two binary, decimal, and hexadecimal. And that's really, really easy. We're going to give you the easy way to do it. But um, basically, the coding of ones and zeros can also stand for letters, not just numbers. So in the binary world, the combinations of ones and zeros code to what's called an ASCII code or an ASCII value. And that, that's a decimal number that is used to represent a letter, and then it's painted on the screen with that letter, lowercase a, uppercase a, and so on. Any questions so far? Any questions about the base two system and this first example of the base two system? Okay, I need somebody to say no, or I'm gonna wait and ask again, because I wonder if like I've lost. No. Them. Okay, all right. So if we go to the left, if we had a fifth place, if we had a five place binary value, five ones and zero potentials, right? Could be zero, could be a one right here in the fifth place. What do you suppose the exponent would be right here? Um, uh, two, 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 four. It would be two to the fourth. correct. It would be two to the fourth. Thank you. If we had it to the further yet, to the sixth place, what would it be? Two to the what? Fifth. 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 Exactly. If we take it all the way out to seven, that's the same as an eight bit byte. Now, why seven? The first place started with zero. Hello, if we take eight bits, if we add a fifth, a sixth, a seventh, an eighth, now we have two to the seventh, not two to the eighth. Even though we have eight places, the first base two place has the zero exponent, okay? Which is counterintuitive. Seven 
bit places ends with two to the seventh. And two to the seventh is actually equal to 128. So if this is one, two to the zero is one, two to the first is two, two to the second is four, two to the third is eight, two to the fourth is 16, two to the fifth is 32, two to the seventh is 64, two to the seventh is 128. So let's, let's, uh, yeah, let me go on here and take this a step further. So this is where it gets interesting. We're going to take a short side trip. And what I want you to know is that you have the ones and zeros, and they make binary values with base two. But then you also have Boolean operators. And the Boolean operators we're keenly interested in, the basic Boolean operators we want you to know are ands or and not. And it's combinations of these Boolean values that make all of logic in hardware, hardware components, CPUs, memory, all of that. If we take the physical representation of these Boolean operators, we can, we can do this in software. We can create Boolean operators and or and not in software. But if we, if we don't, if we decide instead we're going to do it in hardware because that's much more efficient, then we're dealing with and or and not. In simple terms, when you have a Boolean operator on a binary value, a series of binary values, we'll describe how each of these function. The and is the most restrictive. The or is the least restrictive. And the not flips the value. So if you have a one for a binary value and you apply a not to it, it becomes a zero. So the not is sort of like a changing operator. It changes a zero to a one and a one to a zero. We'll, we'll tell you more about that in a minute. Okay, we're going to go back to the base two system again, right? We said before that any number to the zero power is equal to one. I want you to notice that 20 to the zero power is equal to one. And 5,280, which is the number of feet in a mile, if we raise 5,280 feet to the zero power, the mathematical outcome is one. In base 10, you have nine numbers. You know this. We grew up with base 10. We have 10 fingers and 10 toes. It's the most intuitive that we know. In binary, we only have two values. But in base 10, we have 10 values. We have 0 plus 9 numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And you're saying, so what? I already know this, right? Remember that the first value expressed for digital components is always 0, right? And in a sense, in number theory terms, uh, base 10 number system, the first value used for the base 10 number system is also zero. Any questions about the comparison between base 10, what you call the decimal system? Base 10 is the decimal system. Base two is the binary system. Any questions? So, um, so, uh, ho, ho, ho. So uh, how how do do how do how do do um be 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 base ten work in a in a in a decimal base ten? I'm glad you asked. So we're going to show you an example of that, and we'll get to it in just a minute. But we're going to explain the bit about zero a little further first, okay? So I want you to hold your question. Quinn for just a minute, all right? All right, so what's the first value ascribed for the first physical hard disk on a given system? Is it disk one? No, it's disk zero. 
How about the first RAM module on a computer system? Is it module what? How's the module number? How is the module numbered if it's the first RAM, RAM module? Probably zero. module zero. Module zero, exactly. Now, see, hackers know that on a hardware level, they're always shooting for the zero component. They want to get on the C drive, the hard drive on your laptop. They're looking for disk zero. You want to know as much as the hackers do. So just remember that all of the physical components on a system board, on a motherboard, on a laptop, on a server, on a smartphone, all of the first components are always numbered zero. The first component in the order is always zero. All right, doesn't matter if it's a screen, the screen you're using, um, the, the SD card, it could be the SD card zero, right? It's the first SD card in there. First value of the RAM memory address on a module, zero. First value of a legacy network defined by classes. When you get to CSC 243 and you're learning how to hack networks, the first network address that's defined is the zero address, right? So I know I'm, I know I'm driving this whole point about zero home, but I, I want to keep bringing that up and keep bringing that up and keep bringing that up because I don't want you to forget it. I want you to see it in a variety of contexts. Any questions? before we continue. Yeah, ho, 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 one piece, then work on the decimal. I am so glad you would not let me forget that because, <laughs> yeah, no, we're getting there, right? So, uh, all right, so let's look at this. In a base two world, kilo, all right, so if you've had science classes, you probably, the term kilogram yes or or milliliter and in base yeah. yeah in base two so in the science world kilo means a thousand and mega means a million but in computer science because we're using base two and because we double one two four eight 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 512, 1024. 1024 means kilo. Now, companies that make memory and hard disks cheat you. They use the scientific word for kilo and mega, and they only put a thousand bytes or a million bytes into your disk. And they're not supposed to do that. They're supposed to calculate with 1024. I want you to learn the twos, base two doubles from one all the way up to 65,536. Now, what do I mean by that? One, two, four, eight, 16, 32, double it, 64, double it, 128, double it, 256, double it, 512, double it, 1024, double that. 2048, then 4096, then 8192, then 16 something or other, then 32,000 something or other, then 56,536. I want you to know the double series from one. I want you to memorize them. Why? Um, do you remember when you were learning math and they said you need to memorize your math tables, your multiplication tables? Same reason. I want to make your life easy in this course. Just memorize 1 through 65,536 and it will make your life easier. Okay? All right. Moving right along. So this is what I was talking about before. And we're, we're going to get to Lequin. We're going to get to Lequin's question in just a minute. You'll notice we've turned on the switch for 2 to the 0 and 2 to the 5th and 2 to the 6th. That means we have 64 plus 32 plus 1. So this binary value of 8 bits is called a byte. Hello, 
eight bits together in a sequence from two to the zero to two to the seventh. That's called a byte. Eight bits to a byte. Four of those bits. What's half a byte? A nibble. I'm not making this up. A four bit value is actually called a nibble or a D word. It's called a D word. A four bit value is called a nibble or a D word. Eight bit value is called a byte. B Y T E. And we've turned these on. Now, if we convert a decimal to a binary, right, and vice versa, using doubles and values in base two, here's what we're doing. Let's take the value 175. Okay. So what we have, Lequin, in the uh -huh. in the in the decimal in base 10, in base 10, we have five ones, seven tens, and one one hundred. We have five units of ten to the zero or five ones. We have seven units of ten to the one or tens, right? Uh -huh. And then we have one unit of 10 squared or hundreds. Now we don't, in, in your elementary school, when they were teaching you numbers in math, they said this is the ones place, the tens place, and the hundreds place, correct? Yes. And then the fourth is thousands place. And then the fifth yes. is tens of Ten thousands. thousands. <laughs> and, yep. and, and the one, and the one, six, six is a hundred, is a hundred thousand. Exactly. And here's the thing. The ones place was actually 10 to the zero. The tens place was actually 10 to the first power. The hundreds what? place, yeah. The tens place, the hundreds place is actually 10 squared. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what we're doing. Yep. Okay. So what, what happens if we're converting from decimal to binary? Well, you got to figure out which values to turn on. And if you want to think like a computer, here's what's happening. With 175 as a decimal value, you know that the 10 to the 7th place needs to be turned on because 128 fits inside 175. But there's 47 left. With 47 left, should I turn on the 64 place? Um, no. Why? No, because... Because the one, because the one sixty sixty four place is um um is um six. It's too much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. That's forty seven, and sixty four is too much. So if you turn that on, forty seven minus sixty four, you, you don't you don't get the value. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave the sixty four place or ten to the sixth, um, two to the sixth zero we're going to turn it off we're going to turn on the 10 to the i'm sorry i wish it's 22 two to the yeah it's two to the zero one two three four five two to the fifth place we're going to turn that on that means we get to subtract 32 from 47 that gives us 15 left can we use the 16 value here um, um, yes, wait. We only have 15 though. 16 is too much. Uh, so, oh. so we're going to leave that off. We're going to turn on eight. Now we have seven left. We're going to turn on the four. Now we have three left. We're going to turn on the two. Now we have one left. If you look, one zero one zero one 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 is the binary value for 175. And that's because we've turned on one, two, four, eight, 64, and 128. When you add all those together, it equals 175. Now, do you have to do this in your head for your assessment? No, it would help to know the, how the process works. I want you to know how the process works. I don't want you to practice converting using 
I mean, it's nice to, by the time you get to networking, you use a lot of octets, you use a lot of decimal to binary conversions. And it's good when you get to, but then even then, I have a shortcut for that. So I, I, don't, I don't think there's much value in it. What do you do in the meantime to make your life sane? Can everybody see my screen? Yes. If you would, and you have your laptop or your PC with you, why don't you open up calculator? What I want you to do is I want you to change up here in the upper left corner. You probably have one that's standard calculator showing. Yes? Most people? Yeah. And then if you go up here and you click yeah. on this, you can pick scientific or programmer everybody select programmer please i want you to notice how the programmer version of the windows calculator defaults to decimal format and you have all the numbers here but watch what happens to the color of the numbers here when i click on binary oh they all gray out the only ones that are left are what one and zero. When I put in the binary value of one and zero, the two to the zero place is turned off. The two to the ones place, the two to the first power is turned on. That means the decimal value for binary zero, zero, one, zero. And you notice this is what they're doing. They're showing the leading zeros. Can everybody see the leading zeros? Yes. yes. In binary, yeah. in binary one zero, in binary one zero is two as a decimal number. Now it's also two as an octal number and a hexadecimal number. We're not going to play with octal. I'm going to show you hexadecimal in a little bit. Okay. But one thing I want you to know is that if you if you shift this bit in the two to the first place to the left, it's gonna double the value. And if you shift this one here in the two to the first power place to the right, it's gonna cut it in half. What am I saying? This value, binary one zero, or more formally expressed, zero zero one zero as a nibble or a D word, 0010. It's considered good form to provide the leading zeros because people remember, oh, this is binary, right? When you have the leading zeros, it kind of cues people in. Oh, dang, this is binary. If you don't have the leading zeros, people think I'm looking at the decimal number 10. It's considered good form to use leading zeros. Hackers use leading zeros all the time. 0x is good form to tell people, hey, I'm working with hexadecimal. We'll get into that in a minute. In any case, the binary value of 0010, if I shift the bit value one here to the left, now it's in the 10 squared position. I've turned on 10 squared, turned off 10 to the first. What happens to my decimal value then? What's the decimal equivalent if I shift the bit to the left? Uh, no, no. All right, I'm not going to demonstrate that right now. I'm not going to demonstrate that right now. Um, if I shift this one over one place, I've doubled the value. Now it's a four. If I shift it again, it's an eight. If I shift it to the right, it's cut in half. If I shift it a Another place, it's off the chart. I can't shift it to the right any further. I want you to remember that, okay? All right, enough of that. Uh, let's open, any questions about this stuff so far? So far, so good. So far, so good, all right. Um, I think we just, that was the 20, I think that's what we were just on, right?
Yep, that's where we were before. Just remember that. Yeah, just remember we were. Okay, so let's take this out a little further. Laquin? Yes. In base 10, if I have the decimal number 537, I have seven ones or 10 to the zero, I have three tens or 10 to the first, I have five one hundreds or 10 to the second. Two to the zero, two to the first, two to the second, two to the third, I have one, two, four, eight. And I, in this, in this number system, I only have ones and zeros, so I can only turn on the value and turn off the value. However, in hexadecimal, hexadecimal means base 16. Base 16. There are 16 values in the hexadecimal number system, zero through nine, and then A, B, C, D, E, F. They ran out of numbers. They, they, they ran out of Roman numbers, Roman numerals, zero through nine. There are no numbers bigger than zero through nine, any single digit numbers. And so they had to use letters. So they used A for 10. Because in the decimal system, 10 is not a single digit number. 10 is actually a two digit number. Where we've turned on the 10 to the zero, we've turned off the 10 to the zero and turned on the 10 to the one, right? And we've used one increment of that. And, and I want you to notice that in binary, it's simple because we either turn it on or off. But in all the other number systems, you can have multiples at that decimal or at that that um, column. So in the ones column, if I have a seven, I'm actually multiplying seven by one. If I have three in the tens column, I'm actually multiplying by three. And if, I'm, if I have a five in the 10 squared column, I'm actually multiplying five times 100. I have 500 plus 30 plus 70. So in decimal terms, we do this intuitively. We don't even think about it. In binary terms, we can't use multiples because there's just zero and just one. It's either on or it's off. But what about base 16? Instead of zero through nine, we have zero through nine and then A, B, C, D, E, F. We have single letter characters to represent 10. B equals 11. C equals 12. D equals 13, E equals 14, and F equals 16. It also equals all ones. If you have 16, you have one, 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 you have, you have all ones, basically. Now, if you have a hexadecimal value of A, 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 and I'm gonna say alpha, 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 A as an alpha, a, A, A. I have a 16 to the zero place. I have the 16 to the one power or first power place. And I have a 16 squared place. Put another way, I have ones, 16s, and 256s. Instead of ones, tens, and hundreds, I have ones, 16s, and 256s. 16 to the third is actually 4,096. So I have ones, 16s, 256s, and 4096s. I know it, it gets weird. You have ones, tens, and hundreds. In hexadecimal, you have ones, 16s, and 256s. But if I have a value, a hexadecimal value of A, A, and A, I have 10 multiples of one. So the first A, is equal to 10 times one. So I have 10. The second A is in the 16 to the first power column, and that's 10 multiples of 16. So that, that's equal to 160. And the last case, I have 10 multiples of 256. 10 multiples of 256 is 2,560. I just add a zero. 
that means the hexadecimal value of a, a, and a is equal to 2560 plus 160 plus 10, which is 170 plus 2560, that's 2730, 2730. I want to check my math. If I take my calculator, I click on hexadecimal, and I put in a, 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 I get 2,730. And you're probably saying, oh my gosh, what did I do? I'm taking computer architecture. I don't want to work with hexadecimal. This is so weird. I mean, decimal was okay. I get ones and tens and hundreds. And binary is all right. I'm turning on or off a value. That's cool. But what is this hex stuff and why do I have to know it? Well, there's an easy button and I want to give it to you now. I want to put your minds at ease, okay? Before you freak out and you run screaming from the room, hackers know a simple trick, and I'm going to share the trick with you. The easiest way to work with hexadecimal is to know binary. If you know the binary values for the hexadecimal values, you can do the conversion in your head and you don't even need a calculator. That's right. Let me say it one more time. If you know the binary equivalence of the hexadecimal values, I want you to notice something here too. If A is equal to 10 in decimal, what's the binary equivalent of A, A, and A? You notice a pattern here? If the decimal value of A is equal to 10, look at the binary value of A, which is 10. What do you see it's made up out of? Tens. 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 The D word or nibble value for 10 or for hexadecimal A is 1010. So if you put three A's together, it's 101010. What I'm trying to tell you is you're not going to have to convert between hexadecimal and decimal values often, but you will have to know the hexadecimal equivalence of the binary values. And that's important because that's going to make life easy for you later on. I want you to notice these patterns. The notable binary pattern. We said that if you have an F, you have all ones. I just showed you that an A is 1010. If you have an F, it's 1111. So in binary, a byte that turns on every bit from 10 to the 0 to 10 to the 7th, that's equal to the decimal equivalent of 255 when you add it all up. But more importantly, it's equal to the hexadecimal equivalent of FF, Foxtrot, Foxtrot. 10, we told you about 10, the binary equivalent of 1010, 1010. If we take those nibbles, that's the same as AA, but it's also the same as 170. So that's 10, 8, and 2. That's 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1, 2 to the 2, 2 to the 3, 2 to the 4, 2 to the 5, 2 to the 6, 2 to the 7. You know that this is 160, because if you add these two together, that's 160. This is 10, right? We know that 1010 is 10. But, but the values to the left are worth more because you keep increasing the, the exponents, right? So what am I saying? I'm saying that if you have 1010, 000, you'll go, oh, well, this is worth 160 in this place, and that's zero, so that's 160 plus zero. Oh, it's 160. If you have 1010 and 1010, you're going to be able to look at this and go, oh, I get this. 0110 is equal to 96. If you shift to the right, why do you care? If I take 1010 and I shift it one place to the right, so it's zero one zero one zero 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 zero. I cut one sixty in half. 
if I take 0, 1, 1, 0, if I take 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, that's equal to 48. But if I shift it just one place to the right, so I have 0, 0, 0, 1, and then I move this one over here, 1, 0, 0, 0. If I cut 48 in half, what's half of 48? What is half? 24. It's 24. It's 24. If I take the 1, 1 and I move it here, 48 is half of 96. If I move it again, so it's 1, 1 here, now it's 24. If I move it again, now it's 12. What are computers doing? They're shifting ones and zeros left or right to double or half the numbers, right? That's what they're doing. They do it very fast. They do it very well. I want you to understand that when you shift a binary value to the right, you cut it in half. If you shift it two spaces, it's cut. you cut the half in half. It's one quarter. If you shift it three spaces, you cut the half in half in half. What's half of a half of a half? One? It's one eighth. A half of a half is a quarter. What's half of one quarter? One eighth. What's half of one eighth? One sixteenth. What's half of one sixteenth? One thirty-two. Okay. Do you remember I told you I want you to memorize the double combinations? One, two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two, whatever. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You want me to? You want me to give you an easy button and make it easy for you? Yes. Yeah, just memorize it, right? And then and then understand the patterns. If you know the patterns, this is where half the battle is. If you understand the patterns and how this stuff works, now you know how computers work. You want to you want to double your retirement fund? Create a hack that shifts your binary value for the retirement money in your account one bit level to the left. It's a single instruction. It's very tiny. You can embed it into nothing. And now you're now you have twice your retirement fund, right? You shift the bit to the left once. This is what hackers do. Hackers know how this work. They shift right or shift left to achieve an objective. They cut something in half or they double it or quadruple it or or Increase it eightfold, sixteenfold, thirty-twofold, sixty-fourfold, depending on their objective. That's what they're doing. They're taking advantage of a simple thing: doubling and halving, one quarter and four times, one eighth and eight times. Right? They're taking advantage of how the pattern works. I want you to fall in love with the pattern. Once this becomes intuitive to you, what's one zero one zero in decimal, just by itself? If that's all you have, not, not eight bits, but just four bits, one, zero, one, zero, it's 10. So by extension, right? Here's again what I'm talking about. I have zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, zero. That's a whole byte. Here's the first nibble. Here's the second nibble, but I'm going to shift it one to the left. When I look at it, I've doubled this number, I've doubled that number, I've doubled this number, and now I have 52. I've doubled the number. Excuse me? Yes. So are you gonna have like homework assignments based off concepts like this? Yes, there will be some homework assignments based off concepts like this, where I, I, I provide you with a worksheet and I say, okay, you have this binary value and you're shifting it to the right. What's the decimal value? Well, if you know, if you're shifting just one place to the right, you're cutting it in half. What's half of 26? 13? That's 13. 13. You can do it in your head, can't you? You did that in your head. <laughs> yeah. And, and you're, so this is what computers are doing when they're shifting left and right, yeah. Let's take it a step further. If you double the hex number, right? Now watch this. If I give you the hexadecimal value of one alpha and you get your calculator out and you start doing all that fancy 16 to the first power, 16 to the zero, oh, grinding that out sucks. But let's see what happens when you use this method. 
I have one alpha for a hexadecimal number. The bit, the four bytes or the nibble that represent one is zero, 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 one. But then I have on the right, one, zero, one, zero. Well, that equals, this is turned off. So I don't have a one, I have a two. I don't have a four, I have an eight, and I have a 16, that equals 26. But if I shift it left by one, what's 26 times two? Two. What's 26 times two? Let's see. 52. 52. And what's the new hex value? Well, 0011 is the hexadecimal equivalent of the number three. That's one plus two is equal to three. What's zero one one? What's zero one zero zero? That's the binary equivalent of the number four. My new hex number is three four. Four fifty two. Now here's the part I want you to understand. In algebra, if you doubled one a in algebra, it becomes two a. That's algebra. That's not hex. When you double 1a, you turn it into binary, you shift it to the left, you know, oh, hey, 26 becomes a 52, but then you convert back and you go, okay, if this is a one here and this is a one there, I have a 0011 now, and I've moved to the left, so I've gained a zero. 0100, zero, zero, zero. that's the same as a four. My new hex value is three, four. You have just learned how to do in your head what requires a programming calculator for the rest of the world's population. You are thinking on a bit level like the computers do. It's a hop, skip, and a jump until you have ultimate power. <laughs> okay? It's like, like uh, Terminator, right? You can, you can, you can think in, in digital terms. All right, we're going to stop here. And uh, I have a question. Uh, does anybody have any questions about what we've shared? No. So far. Okay. Let me show you one more thing. One more thing. Couple of quick important points. You wanna be sure to retain the use of all zeros to express a, pop, a proper nibble. So if you shift right, you have to add zeros and shift left. Oh, you know what, we're gonna do that. We're gonna do that tomorrow. I do want you to memorize this, this, um, and okay. So this is the last one in the series. This is the binary equivalent. This is the hexadecimal value, and this is the decimal value. I want you to notice the pattern. When I get to one, it's eight. Zero, one, zero, zero, four is half of eight. Zero, zero, one, zero, two is half of four, right? I want you to see the pattern. You need to know by looking by, at a glance that one, one, zero, zero is C. So just like you had to learn the math multiplication tables, I want you to know the binary and hexadecimal equivalents. I want to be able to, I will test you and say, here is binary value 0111. What is the hexadecimal value? And you're going to go, well, that's a one, a two, and a four. Four plus two plus one, that's a seven. Well, that's the same in decimal. But when I get higher than 10, I have to use the letters. 1010. Zero, zero. When I get to this point right here, 1010 zero, zero or higher, now I'm dealing with letters. So anytime you see a 1010 or higher, you're dealing with letters. If I have a 1010 and I just add a 1 right here, I have a B. So if I know 1010, I know this is a B because that's just got a plus 1 right here. Okay? If I move this over, I know I'm basically once you get the pattern and how this progresses, you'll know that all 1s are an F. You'll see how... This one keeps moving further to the left, yeah? I want you to memorize this table. That's what you need to do by the end of the week.
It'll make your life easy, but it'll also make what you do with computer architecture very powerful.